Hello everybody, it's Adrian Plus here, number 93 in Sounding the Shadows. Yes, I'm Bridget, hello. So, here we are again. Here we are again, and uh, oh my goodness, it's been another week. I mean, there have been some really generous gestures, haven't there, that, you know, very heartwarming stories of people opening their homes and... Absolutely amazing. I'm Really, I mean, I've been absolutely knocked back by the... The generosity of people, people of Poland and people yeah. all over the world, yeah. actually, and now in this country, now um, people have had the opportunity, and, and yeah, now here we're we allowed. are at the end of the week, yeah, and absolutely. loads and loads of people, and uh, I so admired the girl on Russian TV who, oh wow, appeared behind the newsreader with that placard, knowing yeah. full well that she would yeah. go to prison and will be in prison now along um, with a huge number a of time. other people yes, absolutely thousands and thousands absolutely of people in it's really important we Shh. don't forget the russians who really are desperately upset about all this and trying in their own way to make a difference um, you know it, i find if ever there was a contrast between our country and a police state it's to do with demonstration isn't it yeah yeah, uh, I mean, the the big problem at the moment, obviously in Russia, is that the reality doesn't matter as far as one can tell. I mean, mm. we're, mm. We're, mm. we're 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 judging it from outside, but mm. it looks as though mm. um, the, the truth, and we I think we said this last week, the truth is what someone says. It's certainly it's not setting so people free, which no, is what I think we not. were talking about. I mean, it is like a never-ending stream of horror, really, and I think it's seeing fear in people's faces that is so particularly sad and upsetting seeing the tears that have dried and, and the fear and we had an email this week which I thought was so interesting because it threw me back in time it's somebody talking Adrian about um, the fact that she'd found an old school exercise book and in her third year English book there were two poems written when she was about 13 about the threat of nuclear war right. and one of them apparently expresses the possibility of one cruel man oh. destroying the earth wow. and that really threw me back because yeah. I remember I remember when I first met you you know we talked a lot about what we would do in the three minute warning and all the rest of it yeah. And she was saying that... Was um, it three? Four minute? Four it? minute warning. Yeah, four yeah. minute warning. I you see, we wouldn't have been I much good if we no, thought it was three I'd and it was actually four. <laughs> that would be typical of me <laughs> somehow, yes. but anyway. Um, no, but she also said that when she was teaching, and she says about 25 years later, uh, in the 80s, she had a little boy in her class whose family often had their holidays on the Suffolk coast, and he became absolutely petrified about Sizewell. Oh, right, yeah. And... They couldn't really understand it, but eventually they discovered that he thought it was a nuclear bomb. Because ah, that's what Sizewell yeah, was. Yeah. But it was a power station. It was a power station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it reminded me, and I don't know if you'll remember this, but, you know, children's fears are so very, very real, aren't they? I don't know if you remember, we were Eastbourne, which is hardly the most fearful place to be on no, the beach. No, right. And our son Joe was about, I think he must have been about three, and he'd always loved going in the sea, but on this particular occasion he refused point blank. He was not going mm. to go in the sea, he was not going to take his clothes off and put on his swimming trunks, he was not going in. And your mum, if you remember, was so clever she just went into the sea, hoiked up her skirt and went and stood in the sea and took both Joe and David into the sea with all their clothes on. That's do right, remember? yes, I do remember, yeah. But the fear, as it yeah. turned out, was that Joe had heard either you or I saying, I think the tide is coming in, and he had heard the tigers, tigers coming right. in. Well, why <laughs> would you go in the sea if you think a tiger? And why would your grandma drag you into the sea <laughs> oh, well, by when then. the tigers were... But no, it, when, he, when he was with her, he felt safe. He felt yeah. absolutely yeah. safe. Yeah. And they didn't, as a matter of record, encounter any tigers. No, they didn't. They had a lovely no. time. Although I do remember Joe also on the beach at one point, looking in a rock pool and thinking he hadn't produced anything very interesting and claiming there was a camel That's in right. his <laughs> trying to come up with his That's something right. as good yeah. as his brothers yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it's a lot, a lot of fear about and it's not just elderly people although some of the bewilderment and fear 
on the face of older people and seeing older people practicing with guns yeah. Um, because they're determined they're going to defend their their country. Mm-hmm. I tell you what, they're no pushover, are they? Those, no, they're really those, not. Those and they're headed up by somebody who's no pushover either. That's right. I'm hoping I'll get his right, his first name right. It's Volodymyr Zelensky, isn't it? Well, that's Who's how I would person. say it. So yeah, it's probably quite wrong. We, we're all been saying Kiev wrong, haven't we? I know. It's Kiev. I know. Uh, but yeah, uh, and he is coming over actually as a as quite a hero now he really is and i mean what is interesting is that his past has been described as a bit of a joke hasn't it you know i mean comic actor playing somebody who apparently becomes president becoming a president i did i didn't know that he'd actually played the president in this series i, I, we, yes. I assume we've got that right <laughs> yes but uh, yeah that's uh, right that's that seems very strange doesn't it but i yeah. think there is a puzzlement how can a comedian in inverted commas be this other person this person who is so dignified and and, and resolute and mm. brave surely a comedian can't mm. be it's a very odd well it, it's an interesting one for us of course because for, for 35 years or wh- however long it is we've been using comedy in, in what we do um, and we know it's there's more to it than that don't yeah. we? We yeah. know that. Yeah and, and I think I saw it almost most Adrian I know I know there's been some images of him addressing the US Congress and, mm. and House of Parliament but there was something about did you see the little bit of film where he's handing a badge of honour to one of the wounded soldiers. Yes, I did see that. Yeah. There was something. Yeah. I mean, there he is in yeah. just ordinary clothes uh, in a hospital, mm. laughing and joking, mm. and being real. And um, I gather one of the things he said, especially to the U.S. Congress, anyway, was he said, "We will win due to our unique ability to unite. We can always care for our people. Ours in spirit, in heart, in sincerity." Yeah. It's yeah. quite something, really. It is interesting the way we put labels on professions, isn't it? Uh, uh, we we always say to people, "What do you do?" And we usually mean, um, "What's your job?" Yeah. And when yeah. we hear what somebody's job in job is, it's very easy to make very quick judgments. Well, and you've had one or two situations, wrong. Adrian. I mean, I remember once being on the train with you and somebody asking you, sort of said rather slightly embarrassed me well I am a writer and they said oh what do you write and and I remember you thinking well Christian satire sounded so bizarre yeah I think when it, I think it's always difficult to say what do you do and and uh, unless oh, you're yeah. a teacher well, or I remember a, mo- moving somewhere didn't we and I, the, the man next door said what do you do and I said I'm a writer and he said what sort of things do you write and I wasn't going to answer that <laughs> but he obviously wanted to know so I said like, again a I suppose it's Christian satire. And he said, well, I hope you're not going to co- try and convert me. Yeah. Well, if a plumber w- moved in next door, you wouldn't say, well, I hope you're not going to repair <laughs> my pipes because I don't want you to. No. Uh, but uh, we got, we got well, to know him very well. Well, that one worked out all right. But, yeah, I mean, I, I, think, I think it is interesting the way that we decide by hearing something like that. Mm. We do categorise it. And, I, I mean, there have been lots of movements to kind of squash the the fringe subjects they're called the arts in schools haven't there I mean music dance drama become the fringe subjects that are are droppable yeah. and I find that so incredibly sad because yeah, I believe uh, in Germany it may have changed now but in the early part of when I was traveling to Germany certainly in schools there they would have they found the idea of dance for uh, instance as an academic subject or yeah. drama yes um, a, or at least in the schools I had any contact with, yeah. I couldn't see how they could be academic mm. subjects, mm. really. I mean, I, I, I remember our step-granddaughter, who is now a doctor in Australia, and she loved drama, yeah. and she said it was in drama. She was a very shy child, mm. and she said in drama was where she gained the confidence to speak out, and it helped her enormously when she had all those... I can't, is it Viva or Viva? Is it a Viva you do? Um, 
Anyway, no, you, I, I wish you hadn't asked me that. It's like everything else we do. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I, once I, you did one of those, I passed, but yeah. I actually failed. I got a D. No, I did. Just, just a show. No, but how much confidence she had gained. Yeah, yeah. And we yeah. know that dance helps with so many things in yeah. terms of presentation and yeah. poise and communication. Communication yeah. through the arts is 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 a is something you need in life whether you're a doctor or whether you're whatever you are. Yeah, yeah I think, it, and I, I think the problem with, with comedy or the use of comedy or the, or the um, addition of comedy to what you're seriously doing is that for those who don't understand it or, or haven't understood how those things link together, it is very difficult to comprehend why you would do it. It actually, you need a lot of skill to be a successful c comedic actor mm. or or comedian i mean mm. some comedians i suppose slip in very easily mm. stand up comedians mm. but um you 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 begin to realize that the best comedy and I, this is a bit of a cliche but it's, that's because it's true i think in order to do comedy in order to make people laugh it's got to be based on the truth yes and yes that means that the reason people laugh is because it suddenly hits a part of them yes that they weren't even sure was there before yeah and that's why when I started writing and I wrote I started a book with somebody um, bending down in the church to pick up um, a tube of fruit gums and having someone put their hands on their heads to pray for them yes um, well you just didn't laugh at those things no. then I mean, um, that's been very good for you because especially in Germany and all oh over yeah, the world, you've yeah. been given fruit gums or gummy bears well, it or was whatever their culture, the culture you. produced. <laughs> but also the, the same shock um, in all those countries when I went to them. And, and the, the same process, which was moving from bewilderment to a strange sort of joy at discovering mm. the thing you had thought and felt is reflected in what is mm. said by the person who uses uh, humour. Mm. And when I first, uh, or re near the opening point, where Howard Zelensky, when he'd been offered a way out of the country and he said something like, we need guns, not a lift. Yes, I don't brilliant. Want to lift. Absolutely and, uh, brilliant. And I thought, that is, that is such a brilliant thing yes, to say. Yes, absolutely, um, absolutely. But yeah. And I mean, the way he was addressing, I mean, here's the... Here's the, the guy with the honed skills, the way mm. he was addressing the US Assembly. I mean, tremendous. Very good stuff. Very yeah. fluent yeah. and very passionate and very directly into mm. the camera lens. So he was speaking to you, which is the best sort of communicator, isn't it? And we have discovered, haven't we? And we know it's a fact that in the, in the Christian world, which is one where we tend to land mostly, Humour is not the poor relative of serious work with people. Mm. On the contrary, it it seems to open doors and crash open places mm. that mm. Uh, mm. people didn't even know mm. they had in mm. them. I mean, we. I think a lot of people would feel that about music. Yeah, a lot of would, people yeah. would feel that about poetry, mm. but not everybody realizes that that humour can do it as well. Yeah. Um, laughter and tears very close together really mm. as we've discovered many many times yeah, again we? a cliche but it, it is true uh, I, we, we've often told the story about the lady I met in New Zealand when we were there and she looked terribly serious and I was quite because you never know what people are going to say she came up and she said I, I'm glad you're here because I want to tell you something and she could have been that could have been a prelude to telling me off, but she said... Um, you said she looked quite serious. She looked, no, she didn't smile, no. She said, uh, she said, my father went into hospital last year with a terminal illness, and he was very depressed about his faith, what he believed, and did God love him? Did he love God? Had he said the right prayers, I remember mm. her saying, uh, to get into heaven, and all those, those things. When it came to the crunch, he was a bit lost. And she said, and I gave him a copy of your book, The Sacred Diary of Adrian Pass. Now, at this point, she might have said, and that really was the worst thing I could possibly have done. And I said, well, what did she think of it? He, think he said, um, Adrian, 
she said he laughed himself to death that's amazing he had it by his bed and he'd pick it up every now and then Mm. and he'd read a little bit and it would make him laugh Mm. and he just begun to realize that actually god is really quite Mm. nice Mm. and doesn't Mm. need special prayers or special things that you do in of that kind so you never know we've been so lucky to see things like well we have but also i think we've learned the value of laughing at ourselves i mean you said about new zealand but Mm. i mean um i don't know there was one trip to new zealand where we were getting a little above ourselves if you remember it had gone so well that's the honest truth we weren't getting it it really had and we only had one night to go hadn't we and we were on a little break before our last night so we were relaxed we were happy and we were staying high up on a hill in the house lent to us by somebody and it was a lovely little house we were there with all our four kids all upstairs weren't we one yep, one big bedroom right. upstairs and uh, the only the only disadvantage to this beautiful up in the mountains place was there was no inside toilet so the idea was if you did want to go to the toilet you had to go out of the door upstairs mm. down some outside stairs which in the actually, dark, in yeah, the dark, yeah. and uh, or, in or you, know, you could switch a light on to go down. Yes, you could. Yeah. No, of course you could. That's yeah. right. And and it turned, didn't it? This stairway. Yeah. It turned and it, it went. It turned in. left. It all right. It turned left, yeah. and you then you went into the door, yeah. so you could go to the toilet. And then you came Fine. Up. We got that in our heads, yeah. haven't we? Except that in the middle of the night. Well, in the early hours, I woke. Um, and uh, we had the children asleep at the other end of the we dormitory, did. didn't we? And I woke up. And um, because I'd heard somebody shouting, help, help, Adrian, help. And um, I, I sort of said a prayer and turned to you, which is how I've dealt with most of my problems. Uh, but actually it was you it was. calling out. Because what well, happened what had you, happened was I didn't want to disturb anybody. That's my story anyway, by putting the light on. So I thought I could remember the stairs. I hadn't remembered that they turned left. So I literally walked down the outside stairs and straight off yeah. the end of the first part of the stairs, up about six foot down onto the hillside in the absolute pitch dark. Yeah. And I was crawling around yelling for you. So, I mean, I obviously, <laughs> I mean, I do remember very well. I don't, I mean, I don't know. I didn't know quite what had happened, but I panicked a bit. <laughs> and I ran out of the door for, <laughs> forgetting to turn the outside light on. And then I sprinted down the steps, forgetting they turned left. <laughs> but I didn't fall. I kind of took off. Yes. And I, I still... <laughs> you still remember, don't you, this huge dark I shape do. flying over your head and landing beyond where you are. Yes. So now there's two of us on the hillside <laughs> shouting, help, help, help. And our children, thinking it must be an axe murderer or something, they locked the door. <laughs> Honestly, hate my children sometimes. And if you remember, it meant that having been so up ourselves before, we had to crawl up onto the platform the last night of our grand tour, yeah. covered in bumps and bruises and That's plasters, right, yeah. to talk about our victorious walk with God. So yeah. it's so always, always been. It has always been so. It has. Yeah. It has. Things may be ro- terrible at the time, but I c- you kind of get... To learn to take make a note of things that happen and, and then you work you with do. them well i think we had to talk about it that night actually because we right, yeah. we looked so awful really there's a something i wrote years and years ago so I, I can't dignify it by calling it a poem but um it's it has the same intention really. whether it's funny or not i don't know it's just called am i the only one it goes like this am i the only one who follows god nottingham forest neighbors and his own inclinations usually in reverse order I do hope not. Am I the only one who likes Norman Wisdom films? Bat Out of Hell, Little House on the Prairie, and Silence of the Lambs? Probably. (laughs) Probably. Am I the only one who hasn't learned to drive? Probably never will, doesn't want to, and might well murder the next person who asks why not, and I still would, maybe. Am I the only one who checks his carpet for big bits before hoovering it, and then afterwards finds the suction pipe blocked with dead dogs, half bricks, <laughs> rolls of prairie wire, nests of tiddlywinks most of the Sunday times, and six pound fifty in small change. I doubt it. Am I the only one who talks loudly to himself when he's alone? You know, when you're coming round a corner <laughs> and you're going, I don't mind, and then suddenly realizes he isn't, feels like a loony, 
and tries to make it sound like a song. <laughs> you go, <laughs> Am I the only one who hates all criticism, especially the constructive sort, because that means I have to do something about it? Probably not. Am I the only one who likes to have his cake, eat it, sick it up, <laughs> then feel sorry for himself? Possibly. Am I the only one who loves and needs love and fails and falls and cries and takes the hand of anyone whose turn it is to be strong, whose turn it is to be Jesus for me? Am I the only one? Mm. I don't think no. so. So at the moment, you know, am I the only one is the way a lot of people must be feeling who is feeling so full of fear. But those last lines are so important, aren't they? Whose yeah. turn it is to be Jesus for me. And I think, I think that's our challenge now, isn't it? To be Jesus for each other, whether it's in our own community where people are coping with rising prices and a lot of fear about the possibility of nuclear war, whether it's that we can offer generosity, whether it's we can send stuff to offer a different sort of generosity. You know, to be Jesus here and in Europe. Be kind, and of course, be kind. In Russia. Yeah. So many people in prison yeah. standing up to fear. And I, I think those lines that he said, you know, we will win mm. due to our unique ability to unite. We can always care for our people. And I know he's talking about Ukraine, but I think we can use that much more widely. So there's no one feeling, am I the and only please, one? please, can we have some laughter Absolutely. sometimes? And um, like I said, be kind. Absolutely. Uh, you you can survive a lot of things if, if you're kind. there's some kindness so around. So, hours in spirit, in heart, in sincerity, and with a few laughs thrown in. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Okay, well, who knows what will happen by next week, but oh. whatever it is, we'll see you then. Absolutely. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.